Hey, Thomas here for another series of Azure Unblocked. And in today's episode, we're going to speak with Manoj Prasant about event hubs on Azure Stack Hub. So stay tuned. Hey, Manoj, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Thomas. How are you? Doing very well. Uh, happy to have you on today's Azure Unblocked. Um, oh, mine. Perfect. You um, are a PM uh, working on event hubs on Azure Stack Hub. So can you quickly introduce yourself a little bit on what you're working for? Yep, absolutely. Uh, my name is Manoj Prasad. Uh, I'm the PM uh, for Event Hubs on Azure Stack Hub. Uh, you know, I've been part of uh, Azure Messaging team for like four months now. Uh, it's been it's been great. And uh, you know, as a product owner, uh, it's on me to drive the roadmap and you know uh, take the features to to the release like GA and and things like that. So those are the kind of things that uh, you know I I manage for Event Hubs on Azure Stack. Okay, that is amazing. That sounds, by the way, that sounds like a really interesting job. Thank you. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So for the people who are watching this and um, are probably not so familiar with Event Hubs, uh, can you give us a very short introduction of what Event Hubs is? Yeah, absolutely. So Event Hubs, think about uh, you know the streaming jobs. You know, if you have like, a, uh, if you want to stream the data and if you want to ingest those uh, streaming data. Uh, Event Hubs is a perfect service, whether it be it on cloud or on prem, like you know, on Azure Stack Hub. Uh, so, so uh, I mean, think think about all the all the uh, or, you know all the use cases where you are trying to ingest the streaming data. Uh, Event Hubs are perfectly capable of handling like pretty high workloads. Okay, that is awesome. Yeah, I, I remember like I worked with Event Hubs uh, in Azure itself, um, but now again, as we are here for this Azure Unblocked. Um, we're talking about like also bringing event hubs to Azure Stack Hub, which basically allows customers now to run um, like event hubs that that service we have um, in their own data center or at their own edge locations. So, can you explain me a little bit of the use cases why they would, for example, do that? Absolutely. Um, so the first thing is you know let's think about the oil gas uh, industry where think about those smart grids. Think about those smart grids uh, trying to like you know uh, stream the data, and you know uh, you can use those uh, you know uh, data uh, to understand you know if 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 any of those grids needs any maintenance, for example, you know I can run some uh, get some insights into those data and predict or uh, prevent some kind of a bad thing that's that's happening on on those grids for example so maintenance use cases you can pretty much stream those data through event hubs on azure stack hub similarly healthcare you know think about those hospitals where there's this lot of uh, 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 devices uh, trying to like you know stream the data and also it could be like small you know iot sensors for example also trying to stream the data related to healthcare you could as well use event hubs on azure stack hub to uh, in just those uh, uh, streaming data, and you could also find, you know, some some good insights uh, from the data to understand if any of those devices needs any maintenance, or sometimes, you know, you could also use the data to get some insights on, uh, you know, general like you know profile, like you know maybe like you know uh, understand how the patients are doing, uh, you know, in general, like you know things like that related to healthcare. That's going to be very beneficial if you use uh, event hubs uh, to ingest those data. Uh, retail, uh, for example, you know, I'm offering something to the consumers. Uh, how do I get uh, feedback from from consumers whether they're happy with my offering? Like I'm doing some promotional events and pricing schemes, for example. How do I know that whether they, those are effective? How do I know that my consumers are always engaged? Uh, so. Uh, event hubs could be helpful to again ingest those data, and you could always run insights to get those feedback. That's going to be uh, a, a great use case on, uh, on retail. Uh, in general, application operations like think about those logs. You know, logs have a lot of you know a lot of times uh, valuable information. I could use the logs to do some monitoring, some troubleshooting, or you know uh, pass the logs and maybe find some patterns to see if there's some, some issues, for example, uh, things like that. So you could always use event hubs to ingest those logs 
and hence you know do some analytics on those logs as well now financial you know think about those uh, like you know data related to those stocks for example uh, you could use even even tubs to stream though uh, to ingest those streaming data and and also like you know credit card transactions for example like anomaly detections and things like that if you want to find some anomalies for example in some credit card transactions you could always uh, you know ingest those data through uh, event hubs and run some analytics or anomaly detections to find any kind of a fraudulent activity that's one uh, you know just an example use case of financial security you know for example in your home you have all the security devices trying to stream the data you can always ingest them uh, through event hub and run some th threat intelligence you know so run some analytics on that to identify any kind of like maybe do you have any security holes for example is there something you could do better things like that you know in general use using the data to get some feedbacks you could always use event hubs to ingest those data now these are you know there's many many more use cases right i mean these are just like you know uh, simple you know quite popular use cases i'm mentioning but but there's there's many many more things you could do with event hubs yeah no that is there are some pretty cool uh use cases absolutely i mean like the healthcare uh makes for me a lot of sense uh also like finance obviously all of them make a lot of sense but uh there is like whenever you have basically where you stream a lot of like data and you don't necessarily want to rely on the connectivity to the cloud for example you don't like have, yeah. you have like bad or no connectivity to the to the internet at all um, you probably want to have a service which can handle that uh, in your own location, uh, not necessarily need to, again, rely on this. In, in some things, like as you just showed, in some use cases, it can be very critical, right? So you want to have, yep. <laughs> you want to take that out of the equation. Absolutely. And, and a lot of these use cases, you know, they might not, uh, 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 they might not be needing, uh, you know, uh, them to be ingested into the cloud, for example, you know, before yeah. it enters the cloud, they might want to like, you know, do some, you know, cleansing of the data, for example, you know, or some enrichment, for example, that's where event hubs on Azure Stack really comes into uh, play. That's awesome. That's awesome. So that is like, uh, that is super interesting. And I'm, I'd love to hear more about that. Now, Absolutely. now what you show, like, what do you experience, like basically said, like, uh, okay, you're working on events up on Azure Stack. Can you give me a like short overview about how that actually looks like in a technical sense? Absolutely. Uh, so when you look at uh, Azure Event Hub, there's there's two things that's important, right? One is the producer, you know, the one that produces all these events, and the other part is the consumer. You know, it consumes all these events from uh, Event Hub. Now, producers uh, they could use any of the three protocols that are available, which is like HTTPS or AMQP or Kafka, they could use any of these protocols to uh, produce the events. And on the other hand, the receivers too can can use any of these th three protocols to consume the events as well. You know, and now you know when you have these consumers, you know it's not like you know one or two; it's many, many consumers. You know, potentially they, there would be many, many con uh, consumers. And in order to have many consumers. The concurrency is is pretty critical, you know, uh, because you know one consumer trying to consume events and waiting for the other is is not really practical, yeah. right? So the con concurrency is, is critical, and in order to enable the concurrency of consuming the events, partitions are 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 designed, you know, you the the part the, so within Event Hub, uh, all the events just get get, get into these different partitions. Which basically then consumers read from you know the the different partitions and and that's how you know they they uh, uh, they concurrently uh, do that and you know one consumer consuming events should not impact the other consumer also trying to consume the same events so which means there might be some kind of an isolation required right like each consumers might need like their own private snapshot of events in the event hub and how is that enabled that's through those consumer groups. So consumer groups provides the consumers a private view of events of uh, you know in the in the event hubs, and in that way, the each consumers can independently you know view their data irrespective of what the other other consumer is doing. So from a high level, I would say these are all the big players that are involved with the you know event hubs on on Azure Stack Hub. 
Okay, now that's pretty interesting. I mean, obviously the system needs, uh, you just brought up a, uh, a really large form amount of points. Like it obviously needs to be scalable and needs to work for multiple mm -hmm. different consumers. Uh, so uh, again, there's a lot of engineering work, which obviously yep. goes into this, right? Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's why, you know, the partition, you know, uh, thing is pretty cri critical, you know, uh, for, for, for a scalability aspect and also the concurrency aspect. Uh, yep. and consumer groups, you know, so, so yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, no, that, that is fantastic. Again, I always love to know, really understand how things are working. Um, the next thing I really want to talk about is, uh, we, we already covered this a little bit with the use cases, um, but I want to understand a little bit deeper now on like, what can events hubs do for, for me and why like would a customer need it? And so yeah, I'm sure there are like a couple of things you can explain mm -hmm. here. Absolutely. I mean, great question, right? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, before even uh, diving deep into event hubs, I probably need to understand what are the key things that 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 event hubs is bringing onto the table, and why do I need to use that, right? Like, why 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 do I need to uh, use it on on Stack Hub? You know, so let's let's try to answer those questions. The 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 first and you know foremost thing what event hubs uh, uh, brings is processing large volumes of events per second, like you know. You can ingest uh, huge volumes of events per second and also consume huge volumes of events per second. So processing like really, really large volumes of uh, events per second is, is the key feature of Event Hub, you know. And now uh, with Event Hubs, you can also do processing if you need real time or also batch if you if if your use case demands. Now, real time. So generally what, what you could do is uh, you could have, uh, uh, you know, Azure Stream Analytics job, for example, consuming the uh, events real time from Event Hub, and maybe do some kind of a processing, like you know, maybe do some kind of a analytics on that, you know, real time, and maybe through a Power BI, you could easily visualize it uh, real time as well. So just a simple use case of how you can do a real time uh, 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 solution. Uh, in terms of batch, uh, Event Hub supports a feature called Capture where it will, if enabled, it will, it's going to store the events uh, into like uh, a storage, like block for, it, for example. And now applications can start reading uh, in a, maybe in a cadence from the blob or in a batch to, you know, to process the events and do some kind of an analytics on that maybe, you know. So that's why event hubs will allow both the cases, like maybe a real time or even the batch, uh, batch processing. Now we the the third point which touch, uh, which touched upon this uh, uh, previously, where the concurrency, if multiple consumers need to concurrently uh, consume the data, then you really need the partitions, and Event Hub uh, even Event Hub is already supporting that uh, partition uh, logic. Uh, Kafka. Now the the Kafka support is amazing. You know um, the Event Hub is is going to expose an endpoint for uh, uh, for uh, Apache Kafka producer and consumer APIs. So which means it's actually going to support the pass on prim model. Uh, so let me explain what that pass on prim model is, you know. Uh, you know, without this, for example, you might have to like, you know, uh, manage your own clusters and, and things like that. But with, with, with this support, Event Hub is already going to do that for you. Meaning on your, on your Azure Stack Hub uh, with Kafka support, you can you can you know uh, get the you can you, you can manage your uh, the, uh, the the event hubs is going to manage all those clusters for you, and hence you know you can actually truly get that pass on prem uh, uh, experience with this with this Kafka support. Oh, wow. Okay. This is pretty cool. This is uh, this is really cool. Again, I I don't need to like care of it. It really is a it is a service which which will which is offered to me to actually take care of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 the other other cool thing about Kafka is. You can uh, uh, you can uh, you know produce with with one protocol and you can consume with other. For example, you can produce with Kafka and then consume with AMQP, or you could do vice vice versa, where AMQP and Kafka, or you can do both Kafka. Nice. Things like this, you know, it's it's going to support this multi protocol, which is pretty cool, I would say. You know? So I can also use it kind of like as a like to translate from like a one protocol to the other protocol if if I need to, right? If I have like the consumers like they work with a different protocol, I could I could definitely leverage yes. that. Okay. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, now, uh, so let's answer the why question, you know, uh, why do we need to use event hubs on Azure Stack Hub? Think about those use cases where, you know, I, I, I need to ingest the data to maybe Azure Cloud, uh, but having said that, uh, I need to do some kind of a processing where, you know, I need to do that on-prem. You know, I need to do that locally on-prem, maybe do some kind of an enrichment, or maybe sometimes, you know, due to privacy concerns, I probably want to remove all, like maybe private, uh, you know, uh, PII, like, you know, uh, identifiable information, you know, for example. So you could do any of those cleansing or enrichment uh, 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 on-prem through e e event hubs. So basically you can ingest those events through event hubs on Azure Stack Hub, and then have like, you know, consumer do, the this cleansing or enrichment and then have those data ready to be ingested into the cloud again through event hubs so the great news is event hubs is supported both on azure cloud and stack hub so which means it's going to support this perfect hybrid cloud model where you can we can you can use event hubs or locally do some processing and then again use event hubs uh, on the cloud Okay, that is that is also something pretty cool, and I I hope we can talk about that in just a minute because that is really like this shows the all real power, right? So I could even like let's say I have a use case where I just need Azure, I could run like um, event hubs obviously in Azure. Then I have use cases where I only want to run it on prem, but then the great thing now you just told me like is like I can even combine them. Like I can say well. Absolutely. Let's do some processing on prem. Uh, as you said, you probably have data sovereignty uh, challenges there. You have like network connectivity challenges. So you want to do some like of the critical parts uh, on your Azure Stack Hub system. But then you can take the data which can actually go to the cloud and then use mm -hmm. NetHubs in Azure. And so I'm really, I'm really waiting for that one. That you show me that one. Great, great. So, so stay tuned. I, I think we're this. We, we, we're going to double click on this a little bit. You know, with, with a lot more details. Uh, so the next use case is suppose you know I, uh, for example, I want to ingest the data into my uh, on-prem, and I do not want the data to leave my on-prem, you know, system. For example, I do not want that to be uh, visible outside, you know, from my on-prem uh, uh, network. For example, then uh, in those disconnected uh, solutions, for example, you know, I do not want my data to be like, you know, uh, be exposed to the internet, for example, or even Azure or some other public clouds, then guess what? Event Hubs uh, is, is also supported for those disconnected uh, solutions. In fact, we just GA uh, Event Hubs for disconnected solutions just last month, you know? So with this, this scenario is also enabled, which is, which is, which is great. Okay, that is like, this is like when I, for example, like I have scenarios where obviously I work with government or with companies, which again have scenarios where they don't have internet connectivity or for example, like the typical cruise ship scenario, which we all yep. like show a lot of times. Um, but obviously a lot of customers have, have that request that they also need to yep. run it when like without having any connectivity. And so that that is absolutely great to have that. Now, one thing I want to know and um, is like, so obviously one is running in Azure, one is our event hubs in Azure, and then I have now event hubs on Azure Stack. Can I use like the same tooling or do I need to use different tools or how is that working? Great question. So the so we support this parity where, for example, if you write any applications on Azure Cloud uh, uh, for, for event hubs rather, you know, uh, the producer consumer uh, applications, now you could use the same on uh, you know, stack as well for event hubs. So any applications you have already developed on uh, uh, event hubs uh, uh, on Azure Cloud, you can reuse the same because the SDKs, you know, even the portal experience, we are going to take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, you know, this PowerShells, the, the CLIs, the SDKs, the samples, all is uh, pretty much the same. You know, there's a parity on both the platforms, which is great. Oh, that is awesome. Like, this is like really what it is about. So if I already have tools, if I'm familiar with the tools in Azure, I'm yes. automatically familiar with, with the same thing on Stack. Uh, absolutely. That, that absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to come back about that, that hybrid scenario. Uh, you really mentioned um, that I can actually take advantage of both. So I can actually run, um, again, some parts of my application on Events Hubs on Azure Stack Hub and do some processing there and then take it further for other parts uh, later on Azure. Can you show me and talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, yeah. So let's dive uh, deep into this. Um, so I'm going to show a, a sample architecture of how that, uh, you know, a hybrid solution could look like. Again, you know, I mean, this is just a simple uh, architecture diagram. By no means this is complete, you know, because this this plenty of things you could uh, you could do as well uh so let's navigate from left to right um so of course you know you have all this multitude of uh, data sources you know different types of data for example streaming data it could be logs it could be weather data or different business applications so this box here what you're seeing is the stack hub and this box is the uh, azure cloud so let's uh, dive deep into each of these boxes so you have this data and like i said you know i am you know, for, you know, I'm not comfortable, you know, ingesting this data directly into the public cloud. Rather, I want to ingest it locally and do some processing and then have that process data then go into the public cloud, for example. In such cases, you know, this is the workflow that uh, we can follow where all this data gets ingested in through Event Hub uh, on Azure Stack. And now we'll have a consumer basically consuming these events and doing some kind of a processing, you know, it could be enrichment, you know, I mean, I want to add like, you know, uh, uh, you know, some kind of a data to enrich the data, the, the ingested data, or like, you know, I want to remove some, you know, for, for privacy concerns, you know, I want to remove some uh, personal identifiable information, for example, I could do any of those like cleansing enrichment here, and I could optionally store it in the blob as well. You know, if, if my use case demands that, but basically, once I'm uh, once I'm ready with the process data, that's when you know I'm just going to ingest this into uh, event hubs uh, on on Azure Cloud. So think about this: this is actually doing two roles. It is a consumer for this event hub, but actually a producer to this event hub on cloud. That is the the, the cool thing that uh, you know this this consumer does. Now, once it's ingested. Uh, uh, into Azure Cloud through uh, Event Hub on Azure, then depending on my use case, I could do, I mean, any of these workflows. For example, if mine is a real-time scenario, like, you know, I want to uh, uh, do some, I want to get some real, uh, uh, you know, insights real-time uh, from, from these events that are, uh, uh, that, that were ingested, then you can run, you know, these events through an Azure Stream Analytics where I could write some queries uh, and based on my use case, I could do some kind of an analytics and I could also have a Power BI dashboard uh, uh, to visualize these uh, insights that uh, Azure Stream Analytics is, is generating, for example. So this is like a real time uh, you know, workflow, I would say. Now, on the other hand, for example, if I need to store these events, maybe in a SQL format, because... Uh, there's already a capture feature that's enabled on uh, uh, Event Hub. And if it's enabled, then it's all, it's by default going to store all these events into like blob, for example, you know, some, some storage. So that's already available uh, uh, by default. But my scenario is that, you know, I need it to be in SQL format, for example. Then what we can do is as soon as the capture, uh, the events are captured from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Event Hub, it's going to generate these capture event and we can use, we can leverage that event through event grid and have the have the Azure function, for example, get get that event delivered. And once that event uh, uh, gets delivered, then Azure function can go read those events from the blob and maybe do that conversion into SQL and maybe store it into a SQL data warehouse. So this could be a SQL kind of a, a, a scenario, I would say. And many more, you know, uh, yeah. this is just a couple of scenarios, you know, I'm highlighting, but but really once the data is available based on my use case, you know, there's many, many different workflows that's possible. Yeah, yeah, it looks like there's now like, especially with the last thing you showed me, basically then from event hubs, I can actually trigger like functions. And from there I can really, um, Play around, do really everything I actually need to need to do, and uh, Event Hub is just a great um, tool for this. And I also like again the part where you said like coming back on the first part of the thing where you said like, well, we could also like like animate like do um, like reduce some of the data to make sure that it, like it's not like there's no personal information in it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. some companies really have these requests, or mm -hmm. as you said, I can also enrich the data and add something to it, which I need to uh, for my analyzers in Azure. I want to run it there or for long-term storage. So, so that that is that is pretty cool. Now, I know that um, obviously because. Azure Stack Hub is a very like kind of like a small version of like if you're part of Azure compared to Azure. Um, so I'm sure there's 
there must be some limitation, even though we have great consistency with both of them. Like you said, like you can use the same tooling, I can use the same code and all of that. But is there, um, are there some like limitations or, or some features which are not available in one or the other? Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's look into this uh, comparison of uh, you know our offering on event types on Azure Stack versus the versus the Azure. Uh, the good news is Kafka support is available on both, so that's 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 a great news. Uh, the capture feature, which I was talking you know earlier, that's available on Azure Event Hub, but currently it's not available on uh, Azure Stack. But the good news is it's already part of our roadmap, so we are already trying to you know plug this uh, gap you know, uh, to say, uh, and then, you know, the, the good news is the cluster creation is available on both. What, what this means is, uh, you know, on Azure Event Hub, we generally support three tiers, uh, a standard, uh, you know, a, a basic and, uh, uh, you know, the dedicated. Now the, the basic and standard are multi-tenancy models, but the dedicated is like a single tenancy model where the customers can create something called capacity units, which is basically clusters that the customers can create those clusters and basically it's single tenancy model. So they can use it pretty much, you know, the entire resources is for, 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 for themselves to use. So what we have done is we have supported this dedicated model on the event hub on uh, Azure stack. So which means the cluster creation experience from Azure event hub is exactly the same uh, as uh, event ups on Azure Stack as well. So the customers can, again, you know, create the uh, CUs and then have the entire cluster, you know, basically for themselves. Uh, now the admin and, uh, you know, operator admin and operator diagnostics, those are pretty, uh, you know, Azure Stack Hub uh, related concepts. So that's not really applicable on uh, Azure event hubs, but the Azure monitor, which is really useful for like, you know, diagnostic settings and, you know, in general diagnostics and troubleshooting, that's available, that support is available on both the platforms, be it on Azure Event Hub or the Event Hub on Azure Stack Hub. Uh, pricing, like I said, you know, uh, the dedicated model that we support on Azure Event Hub, that's the same model that we support on e Event Hub. And as a result, you know, on uh, Stack Hub, uh, the pricing is more based on like core comp, like, you know, how many clusters you're using, you're, you're basically going to get charged based on that usage. Okay, that, that is awesome. So you basically get the dedicated part, uh, no basic or standard in that sense. You really get like the high level part, but uh, you get obviously, because of because it can obviously be used in disconnected scenarios, you will be uh, using another pricing model. And obviously it makes much sense. Like obviously why would we, with the operator experience, as you said, uh, in Azure is not needed because we basically, Microsoft operates that part. Um, and then obviously it's cool that we already have all these features, especially the integration with Azure Monitor. And then also that you already hi highlight here the roadmap. So uh, this, is, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> now, again, thank you for showing this. Now, what mm -hmm. I really wanna see, obviously, we wanna see that and also the viewers of this video wanna see it in action. So yep. is it possible that you show us a quick demo um, uh, about what you can do with event hubs on Azure Stack Hub. Absolutely, uh, I'll be glad to provide a demo. And in fact, you know, uh, I'm I'm going to provide the demo based on the hybrid cloud model that uh, you know that we talked about. Uh, so before we dive deep into the demo, let's quickly look at you know from a high level the architecture, you know, uh, so that you know uh, the viewers understands you know what are the things that's part of the demo and you know what what's you know what's the architecture, you know yep. what are the pieces that are involved in the the, with the demo. Uh, so suppose let's say. You know, I'm I'm a business owner and I have some stores, maybe in you know, like Redmond area, for example. Uh, and then you know, my intent is to ingest all those business transactions, uh, you know, which, which has credit card details and things like that. My in my intent is I would like to know uh, among all my business transactions, you know, how many of them have like fraudulent credit card. Uh, 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 usage, for example, like, you know, how many of them may have some anomalies that I would like to know that, you know, like, you know, because it, it might be impacting my business, right? If I have more of this fraudulent credit card uh, uh, transactions. So that's my intent as a business owner. 
that uh, I would, number one, you know, I want something to, you know, ingest and have the data uh, ingested someplace, but also I need some kind of an anomaly detection to understand how that's impacting my business. So with this, what I have is, I, as a, as a business owner, you know, I do not want, you know, all the customer, you know, uh, uh, details uh, with, which has credit card uh, transactions directly in the Azure cloud. So what I would like to do is, you know, all this data that's coming from my different, uh, you know, stores, I would like to ingest them, you know, on-prem, you know, on uh, on my Azure st Stack Hub instance, for example, through uh, Event Hubs. So I'm going to ingest all this credit card transactions and you know, other transactions through uh, Event Hub. And then I have this consumer basically trying to cleanse the data. You know, I would like to remove any, any kind of a PII information from that and maybe do some enrichment as well. So I'm going to do that uh, and then basically ingest all this, uh, you know, details or events into the Azure Event Hub. And once I get the events uh, on the cloud, I would like to uh, use the Azure Stream Analytics and write like a query to basically run real time a query uh, uh, to understand like, you know, how many credit card transactions are fraudulent. In, in, my, in my scenario, what I've done is, if I see any two transactions coming from the same credit card, which is in different locations and five seconds apart, then I'm flagging that basically. I mean, uh, to be practical, you know, if I have one uh, credit card transaction, which is coming from Redmond and the other credit card transaction, which is coming from Chicago, for example, mm -hmm. and they're merely five seconds apart, same credit card, then, yeah. you know, something is wrong, right? I mean, that cannot be uh, yeah. uh, practical, right? So it's a simple query that, you know, I'm, I'm simple logic that I'm using to, to flag it, but it could be much complicated than that but this is just to show the uh, the this is just to demo the the uh, the you know to to highlight the importance of this uh, you know hybrid model you know yeah. let's say so now so what i've done is you know i have this python uh, scripts to basically simulate uh, these uh, 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 you know uh, these transactions and then i have the event hub stood up you know on uh, my my instance of uh, azure stack hub and then you know i have this python script here which is consuming these events and then you know ingesting them into event hub and then i have the stream analytics job running so let's let's dive straight into those now uh, so this is the portal uh, so like I said earlier, the portal experience is is the same for, you know, when you create an event hub on Stack Up or event on, uh, you know, uh, Azure, the portal experience is going to be the same. So this is the portal uh, for my uh, my instance of Azure Stack Hub. And and this is the, uh, the, this is the event hub on my Azure uh, cloud. So you can see like, you know, portal.azure.com. So, so this is the event hub instance on the cloud versus this is on my uh, uh, stack hub. And you can see the, the portal experience, the creating the namespace and creating uh, like an event hub. It's, it's pretty much the yeah. same, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so then, you know, we have this event hub that's, that's already created. Now, just to save some time, I've already created this before, uh, just to, you know, get going with the demo. And I have this stream analytics job setup which is running right now and this is the query uh, as you can see it's a simple query um what i've done is the you know it's looking for you know if if there are any two transactions with the same if the credit card id is the same and the time difference is just like some some sometime between 0 to 5 seconds and the most important thing the location is not the same then it's basically taking account of how many of of those transactions I'm seeing, you know? So that's what this query is trying to do. Uh, so let's run these scripts and, and show you the uh, the output really quick. So again, you know, this script is uh, ingesting events into uh, the event hub on stack. This is the receiver. This is the Python script, which is doing two things. Uh, it's number one, consuming the events from Azure Stack Hub, and it's ingesting them into the cloud into uh, uh, event hub on the cloud. And the final, you know, this one is a simple one. It's just consuming events and just printing it out, you know, just to like, you know, uh, uh, show that, you know, it's that, that that the transactions has made it all the way from, uh, you know, uh, stack up to, to the Azure. 
So let's run these uh, scripts really quick. So this one is, is simulating those credit card transactions and it's already sent to the, um, uh, to the Azure stack. Now this is receiving it from Azure Stack Hub and you can see it, you know, it's already, you know, starting to receive. So you can see in the prints, it might be difficult to see, but it's basically saying I received this event and I sent this event to the event hub. So it received the event from Stack Hub and sending the event to the event hub on Azure. Now last, we'll, we'll start receiving it from the Azure event hub from the cloud and, and you can see all these transactions which we which we in, injected here, you know, to the uh, stack hub, it has made it all the way to the the cloud because from these prints we can see that you know it's receiving these events from the Azure Event Hub, and now let's go back and you know run this query. So now basically what I did is simulate like you know twelve such transactions where the credit card ID were same and the location were different and they were just five seconds apart. And now the, the stream analytics job is detecting those 12 transactions and it's basically detect and you know, it's displaying that there were 12 such transactions which were fraudulent, which may be fraudulent. Let's, let's put it mm -hmm. that way, which may be fraudulent. And now what I can do is I can take it forward from here, you know, maybe just have a power BI uh, you know, display this information. It could also display many more, you know, which this uh, query can 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 generate and have, a, you know, Power BI dashboard up and running, which means like I could keep seeing the, uh, you know, uh, the dashboard periodically to understand, you know, how these fraudulent transactions are impacting my business, for example. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I mean, this is this is exactly the example. Like it shows the power of having something running in your own data center or at your edge locations, and then combining it with running it in, in Azure to do some advanced analysis. And as you said, with that data now, and also to show, like when you showed the different architectures before, um, it would be now also something we could either, as you said, visualize it in Power BI, or you could build a function basically to like run mm -hmm. a certain. A task or send out an email or a message in Microsoft Teams or any of that, right? To make sure that we actually get notified about this. Um, so that that is really that is really really cool. No, I really like That's that right. solution. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So perfect. This is this was awesome. Absolutely great to see event hubs on Azure Stack Hub. Um, so I'm sure now people have obviously questions, where can they learn more about it? How do they get started? Um, where can I find more about this? So can you tell me um, where would people go? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's plenty of documentation uh, on, on event hubs or even on Stack Hub or like, you know, event hubs on, uh, on Azure Stack Hub. So plenty of documentation which talks about what event hubs is and what are the features, for example, and portal experience, like, you know, there's plenty of samples to show how, you know, how I can get started, you know, using event hubs uh, to start like, you know, producing events and consuming events and things like that. There's also many videos actually, you know, there's, there's plenty of videos which actually goes in depth. Uh, remember that one slide we talked where you know I I introduced you know I gave a high level overview of that event hub. There's there's actually videos which goes in depth you know explaining those consumer groups and partitions and Kafka and things like that. So there's plenty of resources you know available. That is awesome. So we will definitely link all these resources in the description below this video. So with that, I really want to say thank you for your time today. That was really really interesting. Um, for all the viewers, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.